This is Reverend Alan Childs, pastor of the Central Church Fellowship, Bandera County, Texas. We're going to be doing a series of studies, uh, short topics, and we're going to introduce them here. In short versions, uh, we'll get to our YouTube audience. Today we're going to be talking uh, a little bit about a subject called the uh, many bulls of Bashan, which had gathered about the Lord as he was on the cross at Calvary. And this is uh, being mentioned here many hundreds of years earlier in the prophecies of the prophet David in the book of Psalms. This series is going to be focusing on the a more simplistic version of the oppression of the spirits of this world. Uh, it's going to be opening up windows where we're going to be talking about subjects such as the final destruction of the earth, the time of the Antichrist, the times of the beast, the many beasts is spoken of in the Bible. And uh, we're, we're looking at a situation here uh, in the reading of this work where the Lord was on the cross and he was looking into both the natural surroundings and the spiritual realm. Um, and we're going to read that and you'll, you'll understand as we begin our discussion following the reading. And this will be a very short video. We'll keep it, keep it brief so you can fit it into your daily schedule. If you'll turn in your King James Bible, that's the one we use at Central Church, I'd like to ask you to turn to the book of Psalms in the Old Testament to the 22nd chapter. And we're going to read that entire chapter and then we're going to talk about it. So beginning at verse 1, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, and shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord, that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I am cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a posture, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, 
Lord, my strength has thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom of the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. And all they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. Our key verse today that we're basing our discussion, this is a very full chapter, has a lot to say. Many subjects could be picked from it. But we're looking at the focus of verse 12. Many bulls have compassed me, Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me about. Now for just a few more minutes, if you'll stay with me, I want to talk about these strong bulls of Bashan which set him around. When, when we look at the situation of the Lord on the cross, which is what David is talking about here in prophecy and giving a vision and a such a vivid picture of what was going on. It was as though he was translated in time somehow to be right there before the Lord, to hear his words, to know his thoughts, to share in his very soul in the, the, the agonizing situation that the Lord was in here at the crucifixion. But when we look at the bulls of Bashan, um, it's quite a mystery statement when you really think about it. The Lord was actually looking out and he was seeing the treatment of those about him and their attitude towards him. But he was also looking into the very spiritual realm. And, and we're talking about what folks would call uh, spirits, evil spirits. Uh, some just simply call them devils, fallen angels, this sort of thing. Well, the bulls of Bashan, very uh, specific, Bashan was an area which uh, had a race of people, um, of which was referred to as giants in the ancient literatures. The, the, the king of Bashan um, in the Raphaim uh, race of generations of people. Um, uh, the king of Bashan was noted in the Bible to have had a very large uh, place to sleep. Uh, his bed was bigger than that which is described for the giant Goliath. So these were, when, when the Lord looked out and saw these spirits, these were spirits that were very oppressive. Uh, very intimidating spirits uh, for an individual. Remember the Lord, his humanity hung on that cross. We're not talking about the deity. We're talking about the humanity. The, the spirit 
uh, our omnipresent God, which filled the house of that flesh, had to leave the cross and allow humanity to die there in payment for our sins, for all sins of mankind. And we've talked about that in separate discussions. But what about these bulls, these strong bulls of Bashan? Well, if you'll allow me, we know the people had treated the Lord indignantly. indignantly. They were disrespectful. They were non-recognizing of, of who he was, what his mission was. And th these were a very cruel crowd that had gathered about the Lord. They had mistreated him in, in ways that uh, it, it, heartbreaking to think about it. And that's a separate subject. But what about these strong bulls, these mini bulls of Bashan that he likened them up to, these spirits? Well, we're going to liken that to the day in which we live now. And, and as we begin to explore this subject, we're going to look at what you go through in your life, in your efforts to make accommodation for service to the Lord, for ministry in your daily life. Now, each of us today, there is certain things that are unique for each of us. I know that the uh, media of the world tries to do a compromise overall of society and try to do a political adjustment in our attitudes and life in every way to bring society together in a definitive secular type definition. But in the kingdom of God, we already have a definition as citizens of the kingdom of God. When you make the decision to serve the Lord, when you make the decision within and you recognize your need of God, and turn from your ways and, and, and the secular view, the world view, the humanistic view, towards the view of the Lord and Scripture and those things of God, to honor God in your life, you're going to meet some resistance. And that's what we're going to liken these many bulls. They're strong beasts. Now, what is a beast? A beast is something that if you were out in nature, uh, and let's, let's just re uh, compare it with a uh, dangerous beast, such as predators or such out there, that you would, you would not turn your child out loose in the woods without someone there to protect him and be with him. Of course not, because you know there's dangers out there. But by the same token, if you were visiting a ranch where there was a, a herd of cattle and then there was the bull separated over there by another fence line, you certainly wouldn't let your child walk out into that open field because you know that bull may trample him because you know his nature is to be intimidating. Well, we're talking about, and we can explore this for some time, but, but for sake of economy of our time right now. Let's just liken, if you will, today in your life, the intimidation of strong spirits that come against you in life. They're like a strong bull. They're like a beast that challenges you around your every move. As you begin to move forward in your ministry, as you go to your regular job, everyone's not going to be supportive. Sure, there's going to be a few that recognize what you're doing, recognize the effort, not only for your own life, for your own family, but they're going to recognize the merits of your outreach, the merits of your concern, for your prayer, for others, for your statements, for your encouraging ways in the ministry of the gospel. Because we, as citizens of the kingdom of God, or by his nature, encouraging, healing, uplifting. But there are going to be those that you're going to encounter, for whatever reason, 
that they're going to be against you. They're going to be against that mission. They're going to hate the gospel. It could be in many cases because it is an ad, an adversary to what they are proposing or doing, or they do not know that they are out of line, and, and, and it could be very possible their conscious mind is working against them, causing them to hate you because of something they're not doing. But for whatever reason, these spirits manipulate and control some individuals to where that they will attempt to destroy your testimony. Because those spirits, these bulls, these beasts of strong adversary in attitude, when they come against you, they know that if they can destroy your testimony, that they can jeopardize your relationship with the Lord. But who are these strong bulls of Bashan which set about? Who are these that the Lord spoke of when he looked out and saw those that had compassed about him? Well, we'll be exploring a little bit more of that in our upcoming topics. We're going to take you to some places. I'm going to explain to you, and uh, there are those in the academics of Christian teaching today that they're not going to agree with me on everything. But I'm going to tell you there are reasons for why things have to happen. And they're not the obvious reasons of the world. They're not the obvious reasons of secular academics. There were reasons why there was the great flood of Noah. There were things going on. But that wasn't the final destruction. And we're not here today to talk about destruction. We're here to talk about our hope. Our hope in the Lord, a loving God who caused that his own son on that cross, the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's who we're talking about when we talk about the son of God. There was only one image of God, and that was that image, that house of Jesus Christ who hung on the cross. But it was love that brought that sacrifice. But there is the other side, and there is the punishment for judgment. And we're going to go to some places in our discussions in these next few topics that are going to take you to some places that you have never went. Because we do have a unique calling for a unique time and for many unique people. Pray with me now as we end this time of fellowship online. Lord Jesus, I pray for each listener, those who hear the word, those who read the word. I pray that you will help them, O Lord God, to overcome these many bulls, these beasts that would come against them in the spiritual realm, to challenge their joy, to challenge their testimony, that you will help them to overcome the adversary, that you will help your servants, help your children, to keep the joy, to keep their testimony, to keep their witness this day. As we serve you this day, Lord, give us strength, give us help, give us your joy and your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Be sure to join us again for continuation of our subjects to encourage you in the Lord is our mission and our purpose. Have a wonderful day. Have a blessed day. Farewell. In Jesus' name.